And the Drax family of were pioneers of racial justice, pioneers of social justice, and of climate justice. Of slavery. Uh, My name's but Andy. as we know, involved I'm an artist, violence, rape, I'm a teacher, uh, and, and I'm also a member of Extinction the Rebellion. Of I'm the an whole uncle, idea of racism and I have two that we still live lovely with today. nieces in the so UK, and I have two lovely a conversation about how do we have reparations and justice because is there is a, a moral and, and a material world. debt that needs to be paid. Well what brought us to organise this event was that over the months we've become aware of a very very serious problem with the Drax family in Dorset. We've become aware because people in the Caribbean have been alerting us to the history of the Drax family in Barbados. Their continuing ownership of what was a slave plantation Drax Hall Estate, now in the personal ownership of Richard Drax, who after 400 years continues to profit from his family's sugar plantation. So people have come together today, trade unionists, uh, anti-racist, community activists, in a demonstration 300 strong from all over Dorset and further afield, with a message to Richard Drax that we stand in solidarity with those people in the Caribbean, who are saying, it's time for slavery justice that the Drax Hall plantation in Barbados be put to good purpose. They're asking that the buildings of the plantation be made into a museum and an education centre so that young people of Barbados can learn about their history and that the fields can be used for the cultivation for the good of the community instead of the profit of a tiny number of people who live thousands of miles away. That's our purpose. Welcome all. Hello. My name is Grafton. I think you'll find the accent is not Dorset. <laughs> Guess where it's from? Barbados. And that's the reason why we're here today, ladies and gentlemen. I was born in Barbados and educated in Barbados. Barbados has an unmistakably English air as it as it's something called Little England, or Beamshire. As, as, it, as if it were an English county. Beam is slang for Barbados, if you all don't know that. As a young man, or a young lad growing up in Barbados, slavery wasn't, wasn't something that we all talk about in Barbados, unsurprisingly, and I, re I want to know why. <clears throat> Because of, I think the reason why I wouldn't talk about it is because of the implication it would have on the people of Barbados. Same. Unfortunately, Barbados was a, was a dense population island. And in those days, as a result of this dense population, large numbers of Barbadians, most of them descended from slaves brought from Africa. In the 17th and 18th century, to work on sugar plantation. We news this visit. We news to visit plantations in Barbados from school, but no one had never told us our history. When I leave my education, well, when I finish my education, I serve my time with my brother company, learning engineering. I am a qualified engineer. After that, I joined the Merchant Navy. I spent five years in the Merchant Navy. Settled, met my wife, settled in Liverpool. Retrained in Liverpool, work in Birkenhead. And then I moved to Dorset for a job with the MOD. Being, while I was in the Merchant Navy, I joined the TGW, which is the union at that time. <laughs> And that's where I become so active, and that's where I learn about the slavery of Barbados and what was going on in Barbados. So after that, I became very active in the unions. 
I also a Labour Party member. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> two of us saved his life. <laughs> On the left. <laughs> but the message, the message I would like to send to Richard Drax today, ladies and gentlemen, is I am sending a message on behalf of the people of Barbados to Mr. Drax to do the right thing and return Drax Hall and the sugar plantation to the people of Barbados. <laughs> Many people in Barbados still live in poverty today. Drats have 15,000 acres of prime farmland in Dorset. He doesn't need the Barbados estate. Absolutely. Today, we are together. Yeah, we've come up from Bristol and we're reparations activists. And I think it's a great move that Dorset has taken it upon themselves to call the reckoning in, really, and seeing the connection between today's pandemic, epidemic of racism and the historical realities of enslavement but I think it's really important as we link with Barbados that grassroots communities are also going to benefit from this and that their voices are heard and we don't just see this as some kind of elitist or neo-colonial kind of takeover of the movement. Thank you everyone. It's really great to be here today in the fight against this. Look at that wall that just goes right around the state, a symbol of so-called power and also intimidation. It will not intimidate us. <laughs> Richard Drax is not only the owner of 15,000 acres in Dorset and other properties in the UK, but also of Drax Hall Estate, one of the largest sugar plantations in the Caribbean. Burn down Babylon! <laughs> totally. The 621-acre estate was established in Barbados by his ancestors in the 17th century and operated by slave labour for 200 years. Oh, Richard Drax benefits to this day from the plantation and its resources. As president of Dorset National Education Union for Teachers. In schools, we have been decolonizing the curriculum. We have, yes, decolonizing the curriculum. We have been educating our students about racism, about the fight against prejudice, it's in the news, it's on the BBC, it's on social media. The terrible destruction and racism and prejudice in sport that was received, um, which was talked about earlier. The racism that is at the heart of the Tory government. Yeah. Yeah. We need to educate our future children in order to gain resistance, solidarity and hope for the future. <laughs> we need to fight the racism inherent in this country. Boris Johnson and Priti Patel. Shame. We need to look after our comrades and refugees who need our care, our love and our humanity. So I have this message for everyone. Time's up, Mr. Drax. I will finish, I would like to finish today with a poem written by a black woman it's one of my favourites, and it has the message of resisting oppression. And just remember, everyone, we all have a voice, and we must use it. Yes. Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trot me in the very dirt, but still like dust. I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. 
Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still our rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh, ha <laughs> ha, like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Giving the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you. Part of the HSA, Hunter Abitur Association, we are affiliated to anti-racist groups. Um, and as part of an animal rights group, we are st we stand in solidarity with all anti-racist groups in Dorset and stand up to racism. Being the main group here, we will always stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters and comrades in that fight anti-racism within the county. Now, I think I've got it right. Uh, hello. Um, I would just want to remind people that Stand Up to Racism was set up a few years ago, partly because of the attacks on refugees that were going on. There was a terrible campaign of racism that took off. And a lot of people wanted to get together and say that we have a lot um, that we have to be united about. There's an awful lot, there's an awful lot that we have in common um, and that we want to defend uh, refugees. And since then, the campaign has taken off around a whole series of issues. And I think that this is, uh, this is really one of them. Uh, Francis talked a lot about what uh, the current Drax family uh, leader um, has, has been doing recently. I do want to just go back and remind people some of the things that um, Hilary Beckel said in his excellent um, talk, which people can still see online, about the history of the Drax family, that um, James Drax was one of the first people in 1641, one of the first British people to import slaves um, to Barbados, and that meant that the family has been profiting for centuries uh, from the importation of African people into, uh, into, the, um, into the Caribbean. Um, that it's also the case that an, an intermediate Drax, um, Al Albert Drax, I believe his name is, um, wrote a handbook on how to breed slaves for profit. This is the kind of people uh, that are the background to what, um, to what Drax is defending here. Because it is not the case, as many speakers have said, that they're just some ancestors he doesn't know about. These are the people who made the money, made the profits, uh, that allowed him to have all this, to continue to have the estate uh, in Barbados. And you should say it was, uh, there were two families that were absolutely centrally behind the campaign to stop the ending of slavery in the British Empire. Uh, the Drax family and, I've lost my note because I can't sit here, and another lot from Leeds um, who really campaigned. Now, fortunately they didn't succeed, though having said that, the Drax family were paid £4,000, which is a lot of money at the time, for their loss of slaves. Um, the slaves were, got nothing. It's worth remembering that at the time, um, the Drax family hadn't even, they had their um, plantation on Barbados, they had an even bigger one on Jamaica. Um, they sold the one on Jamaica because it wasn't profitable. And one of the reasons why it wasn't profitable was because when slavery finished, all the former slaves went up to the mountains where there'd been uh, maroons and um, non-slave people living and said we'd rather scratch any kind of life out of the dirt than work on a plantation. In Barbados there was no free land, they didn't have that choice, so people were forced to go on working and people like the Drax family could go on making, um, making money out of them. And I just want to quickly change because 
rather than just talking about the awful oppression that we've seen over the past 400 years or so, I want to mention that all the time that there's been um, oppression, there's been resistance. One of the reasons for the end of slavery was that slaves kept fighting back. They kept saying that they wouldn't be um, oppressed. One of the first, another great Drax event was the um, Henry Drax putting down a planned uh, slave rebellion in 1675 in the most brutal fashion uh, that I'm not going to go into. But that there was the Busa Rebellion in, um, in Barbados in 1816 when slaves rose up and terrified uh, the slave masters because the vast majority of the population um, were not white, they were slaves, and um, they had the opportunity to fight back, and I think this is one of the things. People should learn about this stuff, because as so many people have said today, it is not taught to us. We're not taught about Toussaint Louverture and the Haitian Revolution. We're not taught about all the slaves fighting back. C.L.R. James once said, it's the one thing that's really left out of black history, the most left out thing, is all the resistance that keeps getting left back. Out. Back. And I think that's something that we need to go on learning about. And it's something which, as again many people have mentioned, goes on to this day. Because one of the reasons that there's so much um, excitement about the history and a revitalization of interest in black history is precisely because of Black Lives Matter. Because people have got together um, and protested. I remember the magnificent moment when that statue was thrown into Bristol Harbour. And people started talking about the fact that we don't want people who um, got their money out of slavery to be celebrated. And I think the, the really odd thing about being where we are today is that while even the National Trust has had to start putting up uh, signs saying, well actually all the money that made this came out of slavery originally, it's very rare to actually have the same family in the same pile that made the money that's still using the money. And um, I think that this is something where it shows the importance of why directly we can talk about how uh, black people were oppressed and how it is that we can fight back against that. And I think all these are things that come together because what ever since Stand Up To Racism was launched and before that, what the anti-racist movement has been about has been about unity. It's about bringing people together. As Francis O'Grady just said, all the business around the football and the shocking change between uh, the government uh, saying it did not support taking the knee to suddenly all sorts of ministers saying, oh, well, actually, they might have been in favour of it, which they weren't. Um, and I just want to mention two things. Firstly, now there is also a demonstration going on outside Downing Street where Stand Up Traces and other groups are saying they support the taking of the knee, they support what's going on there, and also campaigns will continue here and around the country against racism, um, and Stand Up Trace and other groups will be coming together through that, so I'm calling on people to support that because this is still a very racist country, whatever the government's report on racial disparity said that there's no longer institutional racism, there is institutional racism, this is something we have to fight back against, and I'd just like to finish by saying that um, on October, I still can't, I can't see my screen, so uh, October the 16th, uh, there's going to be an international online conference that Stand Up to Racism is holding nationally, and I hope people will come to that and listen to the delegates there. So thank you, and it's great to be here. Um, when I told to certain friends that what, when I was coming here today, they said, well, Paul, it's all in the past. I said, well, if you forget the past, then you might as well forget the future. And this week, I went to a modern day slavery conference of what local authorities can do about modern day slavery. And do you know, everything any one of us touches from day to day, there's been some hand and help by modern day slavery in this. And I think that's still dis even more disgraceful that it's still as prevalent as it was two, three, four hundred years ago. So a repatriation of land that doesn't belong to, or shouldn't belong to, a Tory Conservative MP. Yeah. And the, the notion that he believes that he's somehow superior to us, as well as black people around the world. And he doesn't believe in human rights or justice. Or if he did, he'd be the first one to offer his land back in Barbados and give it back to the people, the indigenous population of the island. So basically I wanted to stand in solidarity um, in our local area. Um, I'm from Dorchester 
uh, not too far away, so I wanted to stand in our local area against the slavery and the racism that Richard Drax pe perpetuates, and to make a stand and make our feelings feel heard, that the local people and everybody from the surrounding areas, we won't stand for it any longer. She says, I'm very sorry I cannot be with you here today. Your struggle is an important one. Our joint struggle is an important one. This country has a terrible history of slavery and slave trading. Not only is this a terrible history, it is also a terrible present too, because we are all products of that history. Many of us are part of that history as the victims of slavery, but there are also institutions in this country that are part of the history of the perpetrators. Some of the great wealth of this country was built on slavery, and there are still individuals with great wealth built out of slavery and grand houses too. And there's Drax in his high ceiling rooms just behind us with his elegant statues. All of this matters because the ideas that allow slavery are still present, Diane says. Because if you're going to invade countries, enslave people, transport them, treat them worse than animals and work them to death, then you first of all have to regard them as something less than human. This is where racism comes from. We're still fighting that battle, as you see right up today. This is important, and I offer my support. We will not give up the fight. Committee had described the Drax Hall estate in Barbados as a killing field and a crime scene, a site that is still so prominent in Barbados. In the run up to the 2010 general election, when asked about his ancestry linked to slavery, his response was, I ignore it. It is a response that is parallel that parallels the UK education system and UK institutions seem to also echo this very sentiment. For Britain, for too long, has been effective at racial gaslighting. Its culture is one of, disingenu of a disingenuous veneer of civility. And what is actually happening is a sanitising of real emotion under the guise of being calm and collected. And for too long, embedded within English culture has been to repress. And today, we say, not time is up, Mr Drax! So when we ask Drax to talk, what we are asking for is reparation. Reparation is about parity, the active enabling of equality. So Mr Drax ignoring it will never be enough. Retelling the story is not enough. Apologising is not enough. Pragmatic steps must be taken to reverse the inequity and psychic damage that has been done to the citizens of Barbados. Reeling upon the tangible atrocities imprint of, the, of colonial rule, the Drax Hall seeks as a reminder to the people of Barbados the implorable acts committed in the slave trade. Today and every day, we fight with our brothers and sisters across the ocean yeah. to rightfully return the Drax Hall. Yeah. 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 Give it back! Give it back! Give it back! Give it back! Give it back. There was a global awakening to the experiences faced by black individuals in the proliferation of support for the Black Lives Matter movement during the summer of 2020. This has highlighted that this is a systemic problem and requires systemic solutions, yet we are all a part of this system. So we will keep on speaking, we will keep on fighting, we will be persistent and we will be louder. This is all of our fight. When the, conservative government, when the Conservative government fights so continuously to diminish and deny the systemic racism that is so prevalent within our society, it becomes our mission to do what is right. Time is up, Mr. Drax!